Hey guys, welcome to another video from Console Service Center. Uh, today we're drinking Switch. We don't have Bang like you guys have in America. I always see Paddy Mayo drinking Bang. Uh, uh, by the way, I'm not sponsored, um, so I'm drinking Switch today. This is a Jelly Baby Switch. I say it's limited edition, but it's been on the market for quite a while already. Anyway, let's get to the video. So, in the previous video, I showed you guys um, what you have to look for if you don't have any visuals with your Xbox One consoles. So, as I explained, this machine has been by somebody else before. So, if you look at the previous video, you'll see the steps that we go through to check where the problem might be on the on the console. So, on this console, we know that. Um, excuse me, I'm just going to change the view here. We know that the problem wasn't on the with the HDMI port. We had to change the 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 hard drive because the hard drive wasn't zero percent. I have a feeling that wherever this console was before, um, the guys couldn't get it fixed, so they probably scaled the guy's hard drive. So I think. Um, Unfortunately, that's probably what happened. So the other repair company probably took it. So there's a little HDMI IC that we're going to replace now. <clears throat> so one of the tips I want to tell you guys about HDMI ICs on the X and the S, like we've mentioned in the previous video, the uh, original doesn't have a HDMI IC. If you watch that video, you'll you'll uh, you'll understand why and how the Xbox One original, what you do there. So I'm just going to quickly put this IC on the board, on the towel here, switch views for you guys so you can see properly what I'm doing. I need to get a, a stream deck, it makes it a lot easier. Let's check if I can get this IC into visuals, yeah. So zoom out all the way. Aha, there's a little bugger there. So they're quite small, these ICs, they, they, they tie in these little things. Um, you know what I should actually do? I should put an X under the scope also, so I know exactly where I'm putting things. All right, I'm going to have to brighten this up a bit so you can guys can see the number, and I'll probably have to focus in a little bit more. So the tip I was telling you guys about were these ICs. I think you can see the number there. So in the previous video, I think I said TDP. So this is TDP 158. So you'd probably be saying to yourself, now, oh, but hang on, Sean. TDP 158 is for a Xbox One X and not for the S. Because the TDP 159 uh, is usually on the Xbox One, one uh, sorry, on the Xbox One S board. And you're right, the Xbox One S does have a TDP 159. They are rubbish, they don't last, so that's why we now use the TDP158 IC on the S and the X here in the shop. Because we know they last, they don't give a problem, they don't come back as often as the TDP159s. In the beginning we were also using the TDP159 on the uh, Xbox One S, and it works, but it doesn't last. So within a couple of months or maybe a year it comes back again because it fails again. So now we rather do repairs for customers that last much longer and they're a bit more robust. So we go for the TDP 158 on the Xbox One S board. So today what we're going to do is we're going to remove that. We're just going to switch on the soldering irons, both of them, one with a fine tip, one with a thicker tip. So let's put that there. All right. So let's start first by removing this icing. And then we're going to replace it again with the other one. I'm just going to try and change the lighting down a little bit. So it gives you a bit of a better view. It doesn't give me a great view, but it gives you guys a better view. As long as you guys can see, that's the most important thing. Okay. Um, I'm just going to show you guys one more thing here quickly. If you have a look on the, on the board there, there's a round uh, white dot. I can't find half of my tools today. All right, doesn't really matter. Okay. So if you look on the board there, there's a white dot. So if you look on the edge of the IC, there's also a white dot. All right, so what that means is that you have to line up pin number one 
which is a white dot on the board with pin number one on the on the HDMI IC itself. I'm going to have to brighten this up, guys, so I can see what I'm doing. Um, let's just bring this light in a bit closer. Let's see if it'll make any difference. No, it doesn't really make a big difference in the light. But anyway, so what we need to do is we need to get this IC off the board. This is a QFN IC. Uh, QFN uh, simply basically it doesn't have legs. It looks like it might have legs, but it doesn't have legs. Okay. So the legs are actually at the bottom of the chip, so it's a bit more difficult to replace. It becomes a bit of a story. A lot of guys uh, battle to replace this. It's not so difficult to get off. Mind you, on the Xbox One X and the S, uh, sorry, the Xbox One X, this, this IC does um, have, it, it, you struggle to get it off, okay? So you need a lot more heat and it takes a little bit longer. So remember, like we've always said, first thing, flux, 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 flux. It's going to blow away probably most of the flux, but it doesn't matter. At least um, it's still there, guys, under the chip. So you might hear a little bit of a noise. It sounds like a hairdryer, but it's not. It's the hot air station that we use. So you can see the flux starting to melt there now. So what I generally do is I just heat it up from all sides. You Usually when I do HMIC, I don't even take the, the board out of the casing just do it while it's in, I just take out the hard drive and the power supply and I pop in a quickly new IC, um, takes a few minutes. Sometimes they can be a bit stubborn, but they come off pretty easy. So as you can see, we're just heating up that area. Um, you know, there's a lot of copper in these boards, like I've mentioned on our previous video, so you've got to try and heat up quite a biggish area around the chip first, so you can get the heat to, 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 to um, go into the main board, you know, so the main board takes in some of the heat. Almost like you're basically pre-eating pre the main board on the outside. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to remove that IC. So it's gonna give it some more heat, a bit more focused on the area there now. Um, bring in the tweezer, just to make sure the view is right there, yeah. So then with the tweezer, what I usually do is I just nudge it a bit. Okay, it hasn't moved yet. Don't try and pull this IC off. Uh, don't force it off because you'll, you'll pull the tracks off the board, okay. Uh, I had one last week that was also at another repair company. There we go. See, it's moving. All right. So all you do now is you grip it on the sides, and there we go. It's off. So as you can see in the middle is a big earth pad or ground pad, and the rest are the ones that go to all the different areas. You can see the little pins. Okay, I wasn't bumpy. I was going to move it. So you can see. That's it, the TDP-159 has been removed. And we won't put the TDP-159 back onto this board again. Even though I do have a few in stock, I don't even use them anymore because they, um, they just don't last. So the next thing we need to do now is we need to put back the, um, the TDP-158. But we need to prepare this board first. So let's just uh, grab that, put that one side, the new one. Should put the new one up here somewhere so we don't bump it. So the biggest biggest success in replacing a uh, HDMI IC would come into your preparation work. Okay? If you don't prep properly, you're not going to be able to do this. It, it's a very difficult thing to do. You need a hot air station, number one. Before, don't try and take it with a soldering iron or a hot air gun, like these paint stripping guns that most of these guys use. Um, it won't work. You need a proper hot air station to do. I don't have the most expensive one. I've got a cheap Chinese one that I imported when I imported our parts. Um, one day I'll get myself a quick, like all the pros use on, on YouTube, all the professionals. But well, we've been getting by with this for 10 years already, so I guess, I guess it works. So. But yeah, I'll get myself a quick one day. It just works so much better. All right, so the second step is, firstly, flux again. As you saw, that most of the flux got blown away. So let's just quickly put some more flux on the board. You, you never, you can never use too little flux, okay? You use as much as you can. Flux is your friend. It makes the job much easier. I'm going to try and zoom in quickly a little bit more for you guys, just so we can get a closer view. So I've burned myself with a soldering iron. Um, okay, it's going out of focus. I just need to get you guys in focus at the same time. So let's just have a look. Oh doesn't look too good. Well, yeah, it's just a flux that doesn't look so good. Let's just move the board. Actually, I can zoom up a little bit further because I see you guys see a bit of a different view than what I see. Okay, let me see if I can brighten it up a little bit again. Uh, okay, let's go 
like school bus. What a school bus must be. Just remove my hand over it. Okay, it still looks okay. Let's just see if we bring the soldering iron in. The review's still okay. Yeah, it looks good. So what I, what I usually do is I take some solder wick. Solder wick is just a copper piece of copper. Um, and your soldering iron, you need quite a thick tip to pull in the, so excuse me guys, to pull in the um, solder. So if you've got too little heat, it's not going to pull it in. So what you do is you start from the tips. You've got to be very careful with this, okay, because what you can do is you can pull the pads off the board. All right, so you've got to just, just slightly pull it, just clean it. Those pads on that side, we're just going to move it up. Get all that solder off there. You'll often feel that the, the earth actually, or the the ground in the middle will maybe sometimes uh, grab onto your solder wick and it'll hold it there because it's obviously got a lot more place there. Just move it back up there. Um, okay, let's just get that out there. Get that out there. Okay, so it looks good. I'm just going to try and get the centre a little bit more. All right, let's just have a look what it looks like. Okay, most of it is off. That's all we want. We want to get most of it off because the problem with this stuff is um, the the biggest problem with the the solder that's on there is it's a um, lead free. It's a lead free solder. Okay, you don't want lead free solder in these things. I hate that stuff. Lead free solder takes a lot more heat to melt, and it, it battles to to grab properly. Um, let's see, make sure it looks okay. All right, so you can see they, they look pretty good. The pins look pretty good. So there's a little bit of solder in the middle. That doesn't really matter. Let's just take another sip of our switcher. Again, not sponsored. But if you guys want to sponsor console service center, we enjoy our switches. We love it. So, yeah. Well, we're really giving you guys a, a punch here. All right, so once that's been done, let's just see that you guys are in view there. Okay, it's perfect. So as you can see, all the pads are clean now. There's not that much solder on them anymore. Um, so then what we do is we use a leaded solder. Lead has a lower uh, melting temperature. We use a very, very fine solder when we do this now and a very fine soldering tip. Um, because what we need to now do is put solder back onto there. I know it sounds a bit weird taking it off and putting it back on, but like I explained, big difference between leaded solder and lead-free solder. So, first of all, like as any video with soldering that I do, flux, plenty, plenty flux. We use AM, AM Tech, AM, AM Tech, AM Tech, AM Tech flux, yes. And the AIM Tech Flux is probably the best in the market. I think this is a fake one because I imported it. <coughs> yeah, from a certain area. And I think it's fake, I don't think it's real. Because I see it's a different color and it's not as sticky as the, the real one. So, yeah, got to try and find a supplier. Locally in South Africa, you can't find them to any suppliers that sell that supplies AM Tech and if you do get it, it's quite expensive. Anyway, let's get back to this. Um, so you can see how small the soldering, uh, soldering solder is. And you can see how small the tip is on my soldering iron. You guys still in view there. I think, let me, let me zoom you guys out just a little bit, just in case I do move the board a little bit more than you do see, you're still gonna be able to see it. Okay, it should still be in focus. All right, so all we're going to do now, okay, so we're going to just tin, put some, okay, get the guy tip into the, the flux, put a little bit of solder onto the tip, and then we're going to run it across, okay, we're going to run it across all these little points, just lightly. Try not to let the solder, the soldering iron touch the pad, uh, try and just let the solder itself hanging off the tip touch the pad, okay, because uh, you can damage these pads, you can pull them off and they can give you a problem just to make sure or if you do just go that in the direction that they, they are going like I am doing there okay and then the main thing is the center okay you see the tips are big enough so it's not it's not doing what it should be doing because you can't get enough heat into that, that earth or that uh, 
make it a fair bit. All right, so you can see I've put some blobs of solder on there. Um, in the, the center on the ground. So that's on there, let's just check. You guys can still see my view here, okay. So next step is we need to clean the board again. A lot of cleaning, a lot of cleaning. So we use a brush with uh, isopropanol, uh, alcohol, just get rid of the flux. you guys can see there. Let me see if I can find my proper tweezers quickly. So one of the things we need to do now, um, as you can see that it is clean properly. So from here on forward, what we need to do now, sorry guys, I'm just putting my phone on silent also so we don't have any interruptions here. Um, so what we basically need to do now is we need to uh, get that all heated up with a hot air station and then we've got to place the HMIC the right way around onto the main board. Okay, let's move the mic back there again. I don't know where my tweezers are. I had small black tweezers that I can't find. Those are my favourites. What I did with them, I don't know. Okay, well, we'll have to use a different tweezers, maybe. Not these black ones, it's a different black one. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. So we've got a nice sharp point, so I can get hold of that IC. Let's quickly grab the IC. So let's just make sure that we got an IC the right way around. Just going to lift it up so I can see. All right, so... Um, can you? I'm sure you guys can see there's a dot just next to the T on the right-hand side. So, like I mentioned bef before, let's just try and dim this light again. Excuse me, so you guys can see what's going on here. Uh, it's only problem with scopes. So they either too bright or they're too dim. Maybe I should just do it in the settings somewhere. But I'm sure you can see there's a dot there, and then there's a dot there. So those two dots must line up. That's pin number one, okay. Sorry guys, I need to make this brighter again because I need to see what I'm doing. Um, but you'll you'll be able to still see. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove it carefully and keep it on that same orientation. All right, so we know it goes just back onto it like that. All right, get our hot air station again. Make it a little bit of noise. So as you can see, we're just heating that area up again. Obviously clean the board nicely after this. So we're just heating it up until we see that solder melt, especially in the middle. Um, the sides don't bother me that much, uh, the little legs, where the legs are going to be, because they melt pretty quickly. Okay, so as you can see, it's becoming liquid now. All right, there, just camera change view. All right, so now we need to get this IC on there perfectly, perfectly, perfectly. Okay, I can see it's not right. I haven't grabbed it properly. And grab it on the top end. Okay, so the IC needs to be lined up 100% there. So we get into place with the first go. All we're doing is we're making sure that this gap all the way around looks the same. Okay, because on the bottom of the IC it's got little legs that need to line up. Remember what I said about this IC? This IC doesn't have any legs, so the legs are on the chip itself at the bottom. So you've got to line it up perfectly. So then what we do is, I've got another little tool that I often use for this. Um, as you can see, it's got like a straight piece on it. So I don't know yet if, if, if all these pins are lined up or the IC are right around yet. But it should be pretty close because I can see the gap. The gaps are, are basically the same right around. So what I do then is I grab the hot air station again. And as you can see, there's no flux on the board right now. And there's a reason for that. You don't put flux on the board because what happens is the IC will float as soon as the flux starts melting and then that messes you around. And then all we do is we put a bit of pressure down onto the IC. Then we're coming with the hot air down again and we heat it up. Okay. 
keep your pressure on it. What will usually happen is the QFN IC, this IC will actually pull into place uh, to the right place. Doesn't always happen, but sometimes you get a lot. Okay, so I'm pushing it down. Alright, as you see on the screen, if you can see on the bottom right, sorry, on the bottom of the screen, the bottom of the IC, you can actually see two little shoulder balls that has come out there. Alright, so those two little shoulder balls here, there's one at the bottom there, and there's one at the bottom there. That's from that extra shoulder we had in the middle here. So what it's done is it's squeezed out. So as you can see, the way I was holding this, it was that way around. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to hold it that way around. Okay, we'll keep the pressure again. Just do that. Okay, then bring in the hot air station. Or the hot air gun. Or the hot air whatever you want to call it, just not a paint stripping gun please um, so we keep the pressure on it that way around again ok, should be fine keep it there, just hold it there, we hold it there ok ok, the solar starting to get hard ok, cool so, that's what we do there right next now we need the flux because what we need to do is we need to remove all these little solder balls and we may need to make sure that the solder is going under through the chip and it's actually melting onto the um what do you call it the uh, the qfn ic and also on the the board it's, it's actually making contact but the first thing we need to do is we need to get rid of those little balls see if we can zoom in out a little bit Okay, uh. that looks pretty focused. So, so we need to move, remove these little solder balls. So we're going to take that one out, and then all we're going to do is use those solder balls, those excess, and just run across all these legs. Just make sure you don't want them to touch. Okay. Uh, you don't want two legs to, to bridge. If two legs bridge, that's it. It's not going to work. Okay. It's going to bridge out the IC. So those actually look fine. Let's going to take some of this excess solder off the soldering iron quickly. Alright. Then we're going to take this one off here. Okay. Looks good. Don't want to mess around too much with these legs. Okay, it looks good. So, what I'll do is we'll test it. If it doesn't work, then what we need to do is we need to run over those legs again, just to make sure that they're all touching properly. We'll have to check on the scope nicely. But now what we first need to do is just quickly remove the... I'm going to zoom back out again for you guys. Okay, so we just need to move, remove all the flux again. Again, isopropanol. All right. Now this board, the biggest problem with this machine that we had when we just opened it up, I don't know if you're still going to be able to see it, but if you go down to the HMR port, you might be able to see a little bit there, um, on the side there, these guys had like silver, I don't know what it was, it looked like silver spray paint all over here, silver paint all over these pins and those pins, you can actually see a little bit of excess there still, um, if I scratch it there you'll see. I don't know what this was um, next to the port there. So these guys had all this stuff all around here. Yeah. I don't know if it was the customer that did this or the the um, company that they had it with. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was the company that actually tried to attempt it. Okay. I've seen weirdest, weirdest stuff already. So what I want to try and do now is I'm going to move this light to this side. And I'm going to try and change the view for you guys. So you can actually see what we're doing here, what I'm doing. Um, <coughs> okay, so I'm just going to try and see if I can move this camera for you guys quickly. So I can get you into a better view. Actually, you know what, you know what, you know what, let's just, let's just, let's just put this back here. Because I need to assemble the machine half and half, just so I can do a test on it quickly. So let's put that back, that camera back there. Sorry guys, I'm a bit further away from the mic. Trying to get this set up properly for you guys.
right. Let's just change the view quickly to get to you from the top view. All right, so what we need to do is now, we can move the microscope out the way, switch the light off. Let's move the scope out the way. Okay, soldering iron, we're gonna leave it on because we probably might need it again. Um, just gonna shift the mic up a little bit quickly. All right, so what we need to do now is we need to reassemble this board. Uh, but partially, we don't need to put everything on. Main things will be your hard drive, your front button, your front button switch on and off. We need the hard drive, and obviously we need the the power supply. Okay, so let's quickly do that, and then let's see if we're getting visuals when it boots up. So as I explained before, we are getting visuals on the. Um, when we boot it up in 640p, no flashing or any weird stuff, but we're not getting visual, proper visuals on uh, 1080p when it tries to boot in. Let's make sure I've got my things right here. Um, so yeah, so that's where it's, I think where the, where the biggest problem is. And I can only think of it being icy, especially because it's not going into 180p um, and when it tries to, it flashes the whole time on screen. If it's not that, then I'll have to remove those HDMI ports because I think what the guys have done, I don't know what that stuff is, it's silver paint or something, or um, it could actually be solder, solder paste that they try to put on there. And um, I think what's happening is that that silver solder paste or whatever it is, is maybe shorting on the HDMI ports. But we'll check that now. Let's just get the power button in. Okay, so what I want to try and do is get you guys onto the screen so you guys can see the screen properly. Because obviously what we need to do now is we need to plug everything in. Uh, let's try and see if I can move this camera quickly. Alright, so I'm going to try and move the other camera that I usually have on me. So you can sort of see the screen. Let's quickly try and do that. Plug in this camera. One, two. Four. There we go. Camera four. I'm going to switch that light off because it makes some lines. All right. So here's the Xbox. So what we need now is we need this HDMI cable. All right. So make sure that's plugged in. And then what I usually do is I just take the power supply to the one side of power board is in. Power supply in. Sure there, guys. Trust this old hard drive. All right, it's all thumbs. So let's just uh, move it a bit to the screen side. Okay. You guys can't really see the console. So uh, let's just try. Uh, well, it doesn't matter. Let's check. So we should get a fan spin as soon as we switch it on. And we hear the beep. Right, so the fan is spinning. So let's see now if we get any visuals on the TV or we're going to have a flashing screen again still. Okay, looks like we're going to get some visuals. It's old thumbs. Let's give it a second or two. Hmm. Doesn't look like we got visuals. So, let's just move the HDMI port around a bit. All right. So by moving the HDMI port, it looks like something wants to happen there. So, okay, now maybe it was just the console booting up. Maybe it was just taking a bit of time to boot up. I'll move the HDMI port now again, or the HDMI cable, just to see if it does give any, um, if it does stop and go, stop and go the whole time with the visuals. But as you can see, we're getting some visuals. I'm going to turn the camera for you guys a little bit more. 
Uh, by the way, that's flickering on the camera. Remember, that's the HK Vision or HIC Vision camera. So it's a piece of rubbish. Bought a brand new and it still flickers. Don't understand it, but anyway. Right, so it's taking a bit of time to load up, which is a bit weird. It shouldn't take that long. It's got a new hard drive. It's strange. What these Xboxes do do is they do run through the whole system just to make sure that um, everything is there, like the CD drive and all that. So I don't know if it's checking for that. Ugh, checking for updates. All right, so it's gonna check for some updates. But now you see this is still working perfectly. It's after this. Okay, the Wi-Fi is not plugged in, so we might have to plug in the Wi-Fi. Well, let's plug in the LAN. We can plug in the LAN. Um, okay, we plug in the LAN. So we can try and find the update. If it doesn't, we'll just have to reboot it. Okay, so this one's taking a bit longer than it should. But we got visuals. It's not flickering. It's just taking very long. I think what we might have to do is we might have to plug in the Wi-Fi. Uh, what was the problem with the updates? Something went wrong. Okay, so let's... Um, you know what I'm going to do? Okay, let's check for the network first. Let's just make sure. I think this controller might still be synced to it. No. Let's plug in USB quickly. Sync the controller to it. Oh no, it is synced. It is synced. Okay, let's just check our network. Okay, we're going wired because we've got the LAN cable plugged in. Just make sure that also works. You never know, maybe the LAN's also not working. Well, these guys, you know, when some of these guys do these repairs, they, they, they unfortunately damage more than what they need to. Uh, checking connection. Oh, we're getting a bit of a problem again. No, no, I don't know if this is the port or if it's the actual. Yeah, it looks like it's the port. So that silver paint type stuff I was telling you guys about, I'm sure that's also interfering with the visuals. So the flickering is gone now, but the making s like snow okay let's just have a look okay it's gone away now so yeah this this repair could cost a little bit more to do because now we're looking at uh, HDMI seam we're looking at the uh, hard drive already that we had to replace also so the problem when it goes to other repair companies that put silver paint or whatever they put on the board. You know, if, if they didn't do that, this console probably wouldn't be as bad as it is. Um, I don't know if it was just the, maybe the hard drive that was actually just faulty, or from the start before it actually came to us and actually went to the company the first time, the other company. They might've just been the hard drive and they, they put the hard drive in. Um, yeah. Okay, so it's just checking for connection. What I'm going to do, I'm going to shut it down again. Just plug it out again. Let's just get the Wi-Fi plugged in. Because it looks to me like the LAN, the LAN port's also not working. Unless my LAN cable's just not making a proper connection. Let's just put it back in again. All right, let's boot it back up. All right, with a fan spin. I'm going to switch the soldering iron that off for now. We don't need that just immediately. Okay, let's see what's going to happen now. Okay, so visuals are back. It's trying to get visuals. So we're still getting that snowy, snowy type of um, glitch type thing on the screen. Okay, it's trying to 
think that makes sense. This HDMI port is probably going to have to be done also. I think they messed that up too. Uh, sometimes I wish people would find us before they find other companies because otherwise they just end up paying more for the repair. Alright, so there we go. We got Xbox controller. Push the center button to see what it's going to do after this. So it's trying to sync. Synced up. But I can see the visuals are still flashing. Um, I don't really want to sign in. Sometimes you can skip the sign in. Nah, the visuals are still coming and going. Interesting. Hmm. Oh man. I really, 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 really didn't want to sign in with this now. So you can see the visuals are still coming in and going out again. Alright, so I'm just going to move you guys away from the screen quickly, just until I sign in. Okay, so the visuals are still coming in and out. Um, just got to sign in quickly with my account. Obviously, I don't want everybody to see my details. Okay, next, need a password. Okay, I've got the right password there. Just move you guys back there again. <coughs> Alright, looks like it's signing in. Well, let's have a sip of switch while we're waiting. So let's have some switch. Alright, screen's not flashing anymore. But this still looks like. Um, it's not 1080p. Okay, there I had a bit of flash there quickly. Quick flash again. I think we'll have to remove, I'll have to remove that HDMI port and clean it up and put it back in again. Whatever that silver stuff was that was covered all over the pins on the HDMI port, I think it's interfering still. Might be bridging two pins together. So I'll remove it, clean the board, clean all that silver stuff off because I'm sure it's gone underneath um, the HDMI port also, so it might be touching the back. Okay, I'm not going to apply any settings, no barriers. Uh, I'm not going to use instant signing now. Customer can set that up himself. Uh, family members, okay, no. I think it might even have some of the guys. No, it doesn't have a data. I don't have a code, so it's going to skip that. The main thing we want to see now is that it goes to 1080p. It's not a 4K monitor, so obviously we're not going to get 4K on it. We don't want Game Pass, thank you. All right, let's see. So we in well, we South Africa always use 24. Okay, we want instant on. Keep my games up to date. Let's go take me to home. Let's see. It actually, does look like it's already in 180p, but let's just go to settings. Move the camera for you guys a little bit more. No, you can't really see that well. Let's just go to display. All right, so we are on 180p. So that looks good. That looks perfect. All right, now what I want to do is I'm going to move the HDMI cable just slightly and see if we're still getting a, a problem with the visuals. Because if we are, then we're looking at a problem with that HDMI port. I know this cable is good. It's probably going to be the HDMI port thing, so let's just do that. Uh, let's see if I can get you guys. Sorry if it's making a bit of a funny, weird noise. All right, so let's see if we move this cable, if we get a flickering still. Actually looks pretty good. Let's just plug it out. Okay. Just going to check this cable, this is the HP cable that we've been using for quite a while now, it's a very, very good quality cable, it's going to bend into the right place. Okay, let's plug it back in again, see if we're still getting visuals.
Well, it actually looks good. So maybe there was something not right somewhere. So there you go, guys. There you saw how we do a HDMI IC on a Xbox One. Um, let's move the camera back again. I'll move you guys while we got it on here. Move the microphone. All right, so there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, as you see, well, as I see, we're getting a bit of a flickering again. I'll have to go through and just make sure that um, I'm not too happy about that flickering. It still tells me that there's maybe a short somewhere, but it's if I move the port, it's not not doing anything wrong. So. What we'll do is we'll just clean the board. I think what I'll probably end up doing is removing that HDMI port and then replacing it with a... Uh, I might not even need to replace it. I think I'll just clean up the board there because I have a feeling that's where the problem is. Um, the the pins on the HDMI port, where they stand, the guys put solder or, or not solder. It might have been solder paste. If you guys know some solder paste. They might have put it over those pins and try to resolder the pins onto the HDMI port. But I don't know why they did that not the way to do it or, or some silver paint they use I can still see while I'm chatting to you guys there's still a bit of flickering and 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 uh, fuzziness coming through so I'll just replace the HMI port I don't need to do it now it's gonna make the video too long but I hope you guys enjoyed it hit the like button and please subscribe for our next videos uh, we do quite a couple of different uh, repairs here uh, on Sundays like today I try and um, post new videos there goes another plane so um, I'm going to try and do a lot more to show you guys a couple more things. Um, I'll clean up this board, take the port, put it back on, and let's see how it goes. Have an awesome day, and thank you again for watching the video. If you did get to this point, and subscribe and like, thank you very much. Cheers, bye bye.